Hola! Ever wondered what it's like to stand at the edge of the world, swing over a cliff, or be within inches of creatures found nowhere else on Earth? Imagine a place where every corner reveals a breathtaking surprise, a towering volcano, or a lush rainforest. In this video, we will cover the top 10 things to do in Ecuador, the land of adventure, mystery, and untamed beauty in nature. I'm Ace from the YouTube channel GM Ace, and I hope you're ready to explore the extraordinary and stick around to the end for a special bonus message from me. Number 10, indigenous community operated eco space. Some of the eco lodges in Ecuador are managed in association with local indigenous communities, providing an opportunity to share local culture while contributing to natural resource preservation. One of the more highly highlighted spots is the Huaurani Eco Lodge within the Amazon rainforest. This lodge, run by Indians of the Huaurani ethnicity, provides guests with full-time participation in the jungle and exposes them to their very ancient lifestyle, ways of being that are sustainable, and close ties of the community with their natural environment. Another excellent choice would be Kapawi Eco Lodge. Located deep within one of the Amazon Basin's most inaccessible areas and co-owned by the Achuar indigenous people. Visitors to this lodge have an enormous opportunity to explore pristine rainforest, participate in cultural exchange efforts, and take part in activities that support both the environment and the local way of life. Number nine, hike to the refugio at Cotopaxi. Cotopaxi is an impressively massive cone-shaped volcano, visible from most places in Ecuador, including Quito and Quilotoa. The best way to visit Cotopaxi is to hire a car or shuttle from your hostel in the morning and travel one to three hours to the Cotopaxi Refugio Trailhead parking lot. Check with your hostel host to coordinate your trip. You will have great views of the volcano and the surrounding national park. If you are brave, some might say crazy, you can climb the final 3,500 feet to the summit of Cotopaxi from the refugio. You'll need special equipment and a guide if you do so, however. If you're feeling only kind of brave, rather than just plain nuts, you can walk another 0.4 miles with an additional 800 feet elevation gain to the nearest glacier. Number eight, explore the Amazon jungle. If you do visit the Amazon rainforest in Ecuador, Make it unforgettable and do it right. Your adventure shall start from Coca, which is one gateway right into the heart of the Amazon, and then spend your nights in locally run community eco lodges. Though a bit more distant from Quito than some other starting points like Tena, Coca offers a more authentic experience that goes more deeply into the primary jungle. It's certainly worth extra traveling with people who want to see untouched forests and indigenous wildlife. These ecologically sensitive jungle lodges are not just a place to rest your head. They're indigenously owned and operated, affording you the chance to learn about the residents' lifestyle, traditions, and bond with the land. You'll see the colorful tropical birds, the parrots, toucans, and macaws, and develop an appreciation for and acquire an in-depth understanding of the rich biodiversity of Amazonia. This isn't some sanitized tourist deal. This is a raw adventure that puts you deep inside the wonders of the Amazon. If you're enjoying this adventure so far, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more amazing travel content in the future. Now, let's dive back into our list. Number seven, explore Quito. Quito, the capital city of Ecuador, rests at 9,500 feet, 2,896 meters, above sea level in the Andes. The surrounding mountains make Quito quite picturesque from pretty much anywhere. One main neighborhood you must check out in Quito is the historical center, Centro Histórico. Here, you can definitely feel the colonial Spanish influence on the area. The historical center of Quito, often referred to as Old Town or Centro Histórico, is one of the most well-preserved colonial centers in Latin America and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Some highlights in this area of the city include cobblestone streets, beautiful courtyards, 
incredible churches, and European-style architecture. While you wander around the historic center, make sure to taste the local cuisine. It's full of traditional elements like locro de papa, a very filling soup made of potato, and empanadas de viento, fried cheese patties. For dessert, try a morocho, which is a deliciously warm, thick corn drink. Do not forget to taste the rich Ecuadorian coffee or a glass of canelazo, a warm spiced drink made with cinnamon and agua ardiente. While in Quito, don't miss the opportunity to take the tram to Teleperico, a gondola lift that offers stunning views as it ascends the east side of the Pichincha volcano to the Cruz Loma viewpoint. From here, you can either just enjoy the sweeping view or start climbing towards the peak, topping out at a height of 15,000 696 feet. Number six, hike through the cloud forest in Mindo. Mindo is a laid back town where Ecuadorians travel to spend time on weekends. It's situated in a valley surrounded by mountains covered by cloud forest. If you are spending the day, then definitely check out Taravita y Santuario Cascadas, accessible by Taravita cable car. This tram whisks you from one side of a cloud forest canyon across the top of the mountain canopy to the other side, hundreds of feet above the canopy floor in the center of the ride. The hike to the Cascades can be demanding because of all the ups and downs, but it's well worth it, especially if you're obsessed with refreshing waterfall pools. Number five, swing over the edge at Casa de Arbol. Casa de Arbol is the famous original treehouse swing on the edge of the world that everybody talks about before getting to Baños. Honestly, it is lovely. There is no doubt about that. And the view of the Andean cloud forests and Turguinwawa volcano from the swing is breathtaking. You stare beyond the slope from your launch pad and it really is as though you are about to swing over the edge of a cliff. Spoiler, it's just a very steep slope. So yeah, you'll look totally awesome on Instagram since there are seatbelts to ensure that you'll actually be safe. At Casa de Arbol, there are usually a lot of people in line. And from this point, you may get different visual perspectives from your swing session. Here's a tip. About 100 feet down the road from the entrance to Casa de Arbol is another unofficial extreme swing spot, offering you a beautiful view. It hardly ever has a line. And to be very honest, is much more exhilarating considering you actually kind of swing off of a cliff. Number four, colonial architecture in Cuenca. In many aspects, Cuenca can be considered Ecuador's most beautiful colonial city. The historic center of Santa Ana de los Rios de Cuenca, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, was founded in 1557 according to the rigorous planning guidelines issued in 1527 by the Spanish king Charles V. Cuenca. It is, in most aspects, an 18th century city. Although today, the town is in a constant state of construction because in addition to its impressive architecture and surroundings, many people want to live here. Moreover, Cuenca seems to be at the top of the list for many American expats moving to South America because of the high level of safety here and the very high standard of living. Number three, adventure time in Baños de Agua Santa. The town is just referred to by the locals solely as Baños, from which its name originated, meaning baths of sacred water. From the active Tunguragua volcano, located at the edge of town, emerges the hot springs. Baños is the jumping off point for a wealth of activities around the region. This is the starting point for whitewater rafting, which runs down the Pastaza River towards the Amazon basin. There are also several canyons in the nearby area, and rappelling, climbing, and hiking through them are very common activities. For those looking for slightly tamer adventures, a stroll down to the Valley of the Waterfalls will bring you to some of the most beautiful waterfalls in all of South America, such as the stunning Cascada El Manto de la Novia and the mighty Pailón del Diablo. Number two, get some R&R &R in Montañita. A decade ago, Montañita was a somnambulant fishing village sporting only a handful of South American hippies. But in recent years, it has come into its own as the country's most popular beach destination. Sure, the town still boasts its share of hippies and beach bums. As of late, however, Montañita has sprung to life with tourists from every corner of the globe. As a matter of scale on the town's growth, 
there was only one hostel in Montanita a decade ago. Today, there are at least a dozen. Nearly the entire beachfront has given way to hotels, shopping, and restaurants. But despite this growth in terms of tourism, Montanita remains a relaxed little spot for a getaway at the beach with a permanent population of a little over a thousand people. Number one, enjoy the beauty of the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands are really incomparable. A cruise to the Galapagos Islands would mean a host of exciting experiences for any nature lover. Most of the animals on the islands are found nowhere else in the world. From its myriad wildlife species, including marine iguanas, flightless cormorants, giant tortoises, and Galapagos penguins, these are a few among the long list of species that only exist in the Galapagos Islands. Beyond the wildlife, the geologically volcano birth islands are something else. Landscapes look like they're literally from another planet, leaving even the most well-traveled visitor completely awestruck. Probably the most fantastic thing about these landscapes though is their variety of ecosystems. For example, Santa Cruz Island is extremely arid on the northern edge. Drive towards the south and you'll come across increasingly heavy humidity and a lush green rainforest. In this area, you'll see giant tortoises roaming around freely, which are famous in the Galapagos. The highlands are also home to unique plants like the Scalicia tree and Miconia, as well as various birds, including Darwin's finches. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey through Ecuador. And two final things from me, Ace. The first of which is that I think there's a lot to be gained by coming prepared. So do plenty of research on the area you're planning on visiting. And the last thing is that there's a ton of cultural aspects you can gain from interacting with the locals on a more profound and not just superficial level. So keep that in mind before you visit. We'd love to hear from you. What caught your attention the most? Please tell us in the comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome travel adventures. See you in the next one. Hasta pronto.